Hey, I'm Nathan Tabor, and thanks for joining me today on Handling Life. I hope everything is going well for you, but statistically, it's probably not. So do you find yourself stressed, worried, anxious, you know, disappointed? Throw any other adjective you want to in there, and it describes our life at times, right? I've been there. It looks like this. Look at this graph. I mean, you know, we got our stress and our depression, frustration, stressful, tired, pressure, problems, failures, unhappy. Those are all things we go through. You're not alone. I used to think I was alone. You know, I've been stressed. I've been worried. I've been to the point where, you know, I was on medication for antidepressants. And things just didn't seem to be going the way they the way I wanted them to go. I just never could seem to get my arms around everything. You know, it's a common thing. I don't know how else to put it. Uh, if you're there and you're struggling and you're going through it, you feel like no one else is going to understand. Like, who do I talk to this about? But outside of going to a psychiatrist and laying down on the couch, who's going to understand? But I ran across this survey that came out last week by Bankrate, and it talks about people who have trouble with sleeping. If you look at this graph here, here's what keeps Americans up at night. And this is a broad range here, and it goes across different ages, and they break it down, but just high level here. 41% relationship, 36% money, 30% work, 28% health. 14% politics, and 31% none of the, of the above. So people who are losing sleep are losing sleep over these issues. And I've been there. I've had trouble sleeping. I dreaded going to sleep. I dreaded waking up. I got up all during the night, just walking around, watching TV, sitting on the computer. It was just, it was a hard place to be. And if you're there, like this graph shows that a lot of Americans are, it's not good for you. It hurts your health. It hurts your relationships. It hurts everything that's going on in your life. It hurts you, but it hurts everyone else around you. I mean, I was to the point with my stress and worry and lack of sleep um, that, you know, even on Christmas morning of 2013, you know, I get up early and I'm, I'm physically sick and my stomach's hurting and that's just not a way to live, is it? So if you're there, you know, I really, I feel sorry, not for you, like, oh, bless your heart, sorry, but I feel sorry, I feel empathy because I've been there. You know, it's not a happy place. I, when I was there, I felt like I was alone. I felt like no one would understand. Uh, and I'm sure that's how you feel. So I want to tell you a few things that I did, a few things that I came to understand. I knew that something had to change. I knew I couldn't stay like that. I, my, my main stress was worry of money. Like, do, where's the next money coming from? How is this going to be done? How is this going to be structured? And it just kept running. And, and the more I thought about it, the more I thought about it. And then the more I thought about it, the more I thought about it. And it just, it kind of came like a little hamster on a wheel. So I sat down and I started really thinking about, you know, what do I need to do? How can I do this? Well, first was to address the stressor. For a long time, when it would come up, I would just kind of sweep it underneath the rug, and I'll deal with that later. But I finally came to the point, i got to deal with this. I've got to take the time, take the energy, and create a plan. So the first step you need to do is if you have stress in your life, what is it? What's the stress? What's causing it? And try to start addressing it. And really then take the trying to addressing it. Um, a next is, you know, to choose exercise. Are you exercising? And I don't mean you have to go to the gym for two hours a day and pump iron and run 17 miles on the treadmill, but you got to do some type of exercise. Because if you're not exercising, 
then you're, you know, probably engaging in, you know, bad eating habits or uh, excessive drinking or smoking. You're doing something that's probably not helping your health. It's probably hurting your health. And what happens when you don't feel good? Well, when you don't feel good, things then start to pile up. If you've got a, a mild headache, oh, well, I don't feel like doing that now because I don't feel good. Well, I don't feel like doing that right now because I've got all this other going on. So as I started to exercise and as I started to eat right, as my body felt better, then my mind felt better. It's weird. I know it's, and I'm not going to go into the deep details of it, of all of that. Um, the next is, you know, spend time with your family and friends. When you're dealing with stress, when you're dealing with anxiety, or you're dealing with depression, the natural is to pull into yourself, to just stay away from people, stay away from the crowds, stay away from the interactions because somebody might ask, actually ask me how I'm doing or someone might see the pain on my face and I would rather just not deal with that. But as you pull away, as I pulled away, it then you start getting those feelings. No one would understand. I'm alone. Start setting a schedule. I'm going to get this done by this time period and then do it. I talk about that in another podcast of dealing with procrastination. Um, learn to say no. Don't overextend yourself. Sometimes I found myself doing things that I didn't need to do to stay busy so I didn't have to do the things that I knew I needed to do. Does that make sense? Look at your life. Are you doing, are you busy all the time? Got more than you know what to do with, but none of it actually gets you to the point that you need to be. None of it actually accomplishes the task that you need to be doing. Well, then learn to say no to these things and actually do your stuff first. Next is control your tongue. Oh man, I have a smart mouth. I, you know, teachers in school, um, even my mama, uh, of just coming back with a, a smart answer or engaging in an argument. And so all of a sudden this, you know, I've either hurt someone's feelings or this conflict is now going from a little tiny issue to, you know, blows up because of what I've said. Well, that causes stress and that causes anxiety and worry. So try to stay out of those things. You know, if you argue about politics and it makes your blood pressure go up, then stay off Facebook and don't argue about that. Remove it from your life. And then write things down. Um, I'm dyslexic, so writing for me is a little harder in the sense of spelling and putting the words in the right order in that, but it really helps me take things out of my mind and start organizing them. So I just keep a little pen and piece of paper, or sometimes all my notes on my phone of things that are going on. It's a really good way to stop all of those thoughts running through your head. But ultimately, this is what it comes down to. If you want to deal with stress and anxiety and worry and all of that in your life, you've got a choice. I had a choice. I still have a choice. Daily have a choice. I can let it consume me. You can let it consume you. That's the choice. The other choice is, is to handle it, to deal with it, to take some of these tips and Google other tips and buy books on it and do all of that to build the infrastructure in your life. But here's the number one thing that helped me. And this is the number one thing that will help you. That's taking things to God. It's giving God control. And I didn't want to give God control. I took things to him, but not, you know, in a really diligent way. It was more like, hey, God, help me out with this. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't seeking his will. But I didn't want to give him control because I wanted to keep control. But the more control I kept, the more things got out of control. The more I tried to do it my way, the worse my sleeping habits got. The worse my sleeping habits got, the more irritable I got. The more irritable I got, the harder my relationships. And it was just this snowball. So when you look at 
what's the thing that can help you the most to help you sleep, to help you lower your stress and your anxiety, is your relationship with God. Not in a just, oh, I'm going to give it to God, but actually working moment by moment, day by day, to give it to God. See, I know God has a bigger and better plan for my, for my life. I know He has bigger and better things for me. And I know He has bigger and better things for you. But for Him to work in my life and for Him to work in your life, I've got to get out of the way. You've got to get out of the way. And when stress and anxiety is standing there, and it's consuming us, we're not going to be able to let God use us. And the more that happens, the further we pull away. So the only way we can do all these steps, we can do all these little tricks and mind games and and writing things down and addressing the issues, but the number one issue that will resolve where you are in your life and resolve where I am in my life is giving it to God. So I encourage you, if you're to that point where your sleep pattern is off, you're not getting good rest because of stress and anxiety, really look at where you are with God. Look at how things are going and really consider really dig in of just turning it over to God, developing your relationship with Him and starting to trust in Him and having faith that He has a bigger and better plan for your life. And I want to close with this. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God's very clear. Bring it to Him. Come to Him and He'll give us rest. I'll be praying for you. I hope you'll pray for me. Um, And if you have any questions, you can visit my website at nathantabor.com or you can go to handlinglife.org. I hope you'll share this with family and friends. Uh, And if you get a moment, go over to uh, either YouTube or iTunes and review my podcast or my video. Uh, I would greatly appreciate that. Hope you have a blessed day.